Whenever there's something going on in Israel, especially a war, then yes, I, I do notice like most Jewish people arise in anti-Semitism. And uh, just a few things to, to sort of mention after, after listening to your very considered introduction there. Uh, the first thing is, I'm not really sure that we should be thinking about, you know, how much blame Jewish people in the UK uh, so far away from Israel have for what's going on there, because I think that's to actually separate things out in a way that we, we really don't need to. I think most right thinking people watched what happened last week on, on the 7th of October in Israel with absolute horror and disgust, mm. not because it was Israel or because it was Jews or because of any other reason than babies, women, elderly people being murdered, raped and kidnapped is a hideous thing to watch mm. whoever you are and whoever they are. And I think that most people of conscience anywhere in the world were highly sympathetic to the nation that was suffering from that, uh, from those terrorists doing that. So then add to that the fact that it was actually Israel, the Jewish state that was suffering that and that the terrorist organization doing it has a very clearly defined uh, animosity towards mm. Jewish people, their own founding charter makes very clear their genocidal intent towards Jews. And I think we can see that actually the anti-Semitism here is even more confusing, not because of distance from Israel, but actually because of our proximity to Israel in our souls and in our hearts. Mm. All good people should be 100% behind Jews and those innocent people and innocent families who suffered those outrageous, brutal, savage attacks in Israel. Mm. And just to be clear, I'm not suggesting for a moment that, that British Jews here have any responsibility for anything that's happening in the Middle East. But I'm asking, why is it that other people uh, think that they do in, in, in order, you know, in order that this anti-Semitism comes about? You know, you think about, for example, America being a Christian country and when it controversially got involved in bombing in Syria, for example, or Afghanistan or Iraq, we didn't see protests outside churches because America happens to, to be predominantly a Christian state. So why is it that people make this connection, Jonathan? Is it just plain and simple anti-Semitism? I think people that hate Jews are going to find ways to hate them um, in any circumstances. And I think that maybe for those people, Israel provides an opportunity, um, even at moments like this, where, as I said, most people of, of conscience are 100% completely against what happened to, to those poor people. Um, I, but I'm not the right person to ask, even as somebody no. that fights against anti-Semitism, because I don't understand the brain of an anti-Semite. I don't understand the brain of anybody who has unbridled, unreasonable, uh, irrational hatred for others because of difference from them. It doesn't mm. make sense. And I think that what we need to see actually is in, in this country right now, the government and the opposition are actually four square behind Israel fighting this genocidal anti-Semitic terrorist organization. And I think most people that I've encountered actually are as well, but there is a still a massive and very vocal minority who will come out and celebrate what happened. I mean, I saw plenty of celebration of what's happened, especially online. You can see all sorts of really quite sinister comments celebrating what happened in Israel. And I just don't understand how anyone would do that. Anyone that's saddened by the death of Palestinian civilians will also one would presume be saddened by the slaughter of Israeli civilians and vice versa. I think this is about human beings. And mm. as Jews living in the UK, we've always had to have extremely high security outside our synagogues, our schools, our community centres. It, it's a daily occurrence. It hasn't just started now. And actually, we've learnt to completely accept that and to find it normal. And I would say that though we've had to beef that up now, we really ought to wonder why we need that. You don't mm. see churches or mosques, I believe, with anywhere near the same level no. of security outside them. And, and why is that? No. Why, even, even if the government says that it's here to protect Jews and, and to stop this sort of thing happening, well, clearly it and no other government has managed to because we've always had to have this. Absolutely. When I, when I went to church this morning, I can confirm there was absolutely no security at the door and there never has been on any of the Sundays that I've attended. And how it should be, be. Yeah, it's absolutely how it should be when it's just simply a community event taking place inside a church. Um, why, why do you think we haven't seen 
houses in the UK putting up Israeli flags in the same way that we saw them putting up Ukrainian flags. Because again, it's not just necessarily about the awful displays of anti-Semitism we've seen, but there's also something going on here about British people being somehow reluctant to show, even if they feel the compassion in their hearts and the sympathy in their hearts, they're not showing it in these kind of outward displays of support for Israel, are they, in the same way that we've seen with other conflicts? Mm. Well, would you put an Israeli flag in your window? Oh, it's difficult because I'm a journalist. I don't really put up any flags or badges about anything because, you you, yeah. you know, you get yourself into all sorts of difficulties. So I didn't put up a Ukrainian flag, for example. Yeah. But, but, but why, would, do you well, think, why do you think I, the general population isn't doing it? Yeah, well, well, likewise, by the way. But I suppose I was asking because, by the way, plenty of journalists I know were very proud of their Ukrainian flag wearing and waving. Mm. Um, and, and that's for their own decision. But probably because people don't want to brick through their window, if I'm completely honest with you. Really? And, I, I, you know, we saw an Israeli flag flown on, in Sheffield on, on the town hall. Somebody scaled it with glee and replaced it with a Palestinian one. Mm. So I think that's why it's not really hard to imagine why. In fact, never mind putting flags up. Plenty of Jews are taking off their kippot, their head coverings or, or any any jewellery that might show a, a Magen David, a Star of David, a sign, sign of Judaism. I think people are terrified of the thuggery they see outside in the streets. Let me just remind you, in 2021, there was a convoy of cars that drove through a northwest London neighborhood with a high population of Jews with megaphones and Palestinian flags all over the cars, shouting that they wanted to rape uh, and they wanted to rape the Jews, F, F the Jews, F their daughters, rape their sisters or, or, or daughters. And there were some arrests and sometime later, charges were dropped. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. I just want to remind you about that because what we saw last week was exactly the fulfillment of that threat. It wasn't here in London. It was in places like Faraza in, in Israel. Mm. Um, it was ordinary people whose homes were broken into by savage terrorists who did, we're told, rape people, murder people, kidnap people. Mm. And I think we need to take seriously these sorts of threats. When we hear psychopaths driving through the street threatening anyone, never mind Jews, anyone, we need to really deal with it properly. It's mm. very hard to believe that in this day and age you can't figure out who was in a car and prove it and do you take think, it to court. Do you think, Jonathan, that the Met are doing that? Because when I was on the briefing call with them this week, they seemed quite uh, animated, actually, quite angry about how much anti-Semitism they had witnessed over the past two weeks. Uh, and they were, they, were, they were pretty strong in their wording about it. But do you think that's borne out in the way they actually behave as a police force? Are they arresting enough people? Are they, are they prosecuting, with the help of the CPS, enough people? I don't know statistically the answer to that question. I can tell you that there's a great sense among most Jewish people I speak to in the UK that no, they're not. Mm. I don't know if that's fair or justified, but I do know that that's how many, many people feel. I mean, to the extent, let's just say that we have an organisation in the Jewish community set up originally by volunteers, now very well funded. The government even gave it £3 million, I think, this week in response to what's going on. That, that organisation is, is purely dedicated to providing security outside Jewish premises and, and that sort of thing. Why on earth does that need to exist? I mean, that shouldn't need to exist. The, the police, the state should be itself protecting all minorities mm. they can, uh, without they can them having to set match, up. Can't they? they can police a football match, but not a synagogue. Right. And, and I mean, I, I just think, you know, maybe I have high expectations of the police. Maybe they're under resourced, all, all of these things we hear about. But ultimately, as a citizen, um, I do think personally that we should be better protected, that people should feel more confident that if something happens to them, or firstly, something won't happen to them, but if it does, that they'll then be protected and taken seriously by the police and that there'll mm. be eventually a prosecution and even a conviction. And I don't think that most people I've spoken to do feel that way when it comes to anti-Semitism, but we're probably not alone. I think that's the case with lots of other crime as well that goes on. I mean, mm. there's something of a shoplifting epidemic going on as far as I can tell in the, in the country as well. Mm. With very we're little... talking about that later, actually, funnily enough. We're right. talking about so, I mean, in, in that respect, I, I, I don't quite know the answer, but and, and mm. I don't want to point the finger specifically at the police or specifically at the government. I would say that as a society, we, we do need to look at all of those 
parts of officialdom and, and ask if they're doing everything they can. Mm. But also we need to look at ourselves. We need to ask ourselves if we're behaving correctly, if we speak out when we hear things said that are wrong. I must say that this week I've been actually very, very heartened by the reaction of friends and neighbours and mm. even people I don't know that well who've got in touch with me. I mean, my, my next door neighbours, I've lived next door to them for many years. We say hello over the fence once in a while, but we're not friends. They sent me a, a really lovely email asking if, if I was doing all right, if, if we were all right, if our family in Israel was all right. I've had many such messages over the last week. It's the first time ever that's happened to me on, on this scale when there have been things like this going on in Israel. Mm. Um, I think that's because the enormity and, and the sort of barbarity of it was so blatant that people really understood for the first time, I think, what's happening there and, and how yeah. it is motivated by savagery and, and barbarism and anti-Semitism. I think in the past, when Israel's tried to communicate its message that in fighting Hamas, for example, it's fighting a genocidal, brutal, ISIS-like organization, I'm not sure people have understood that before because Israel's been singularly uh, excellent at protecting its civilians it, by and large. Though I'm also old enough to remember you know, the 90s and, and around then when when the same organizations regularly blew up buses and mm. pizzeria and, and restaurants and Passover meals, they, they've, it's not a new thing that they're slaughtering Jews in barbaric and indiscriminate ways, mm. but it is new in, in this century, probably, um, it, to this scale. And this is really beyond any, anything we've known before. So I do think people have been reminded of the sinister nature of that enemy yeah. and and they have perhaps decided that it's time to show a bit more solidarity yeah. so i hope that continues and, and we are really grateful as a community for well people you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have to be grateful that. you shouldn't have to be grateful jonathan it's the bare minimum that you deserve as a community to have that support when something like that happens uh, to a community in israel that you feel connected to um We've got to wrap it up. We've got so many calls coming in, people's personal experiences, Jonathan. I want to get to them too. But thank you so much for joining me this evening. That was uh, Jonathan Sashadoti there, who's a Jewish journalist, and he campaigns against anti-Semitism.